for this day. And thank you, Father God, for just taking care of us throughout another week. Lord, you are so good to me, Father God. I just want to say thank you. We pray, Father God, for the sick and children all around the country, all around the world. Lord, there's someone in pain right now, Father God. But Lord God, you know it. All of that. You got the healing power for them. Lord, I thank you for just taking care of us, Father God. Each and every day in our lives. You are the best thing. I always say the best thing that happened to me. So Lord, I say thank you. Lord, thank you once again for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
morning just to say thank you. Thank you. Father God, we thank you for our lives, our health, and our strength. Father God, we thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're yet to do. Father God, we ask that you bless everyone in here on today. Father God, bless the absent part of our congregation, wherever they may be. Father God, we ask that you bless the sick and shut in in our congregation as well. Father God, remember Minister Lee in a mighty way. Touch Sister Ruth Long in a mighty way, Father God, if only you can. Bless Sister Joan Perry in a mighty way, Lord God. Father God, I ask you to bless all of those that are in our congregation, that are in the sick and shut in this morning. Father God, and we will always give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will have our opening selection, number 298, Just a Little Talk with Jesus. After that, we will have prayer by Deacon Willie May Abel. Then we will have the welcome and the occasion by Dr. Linda Stoner. And then we will have our pastoral remarks, and I will be back.
Lord God, we come seeking you, Lord God, for all our needs. And we come, Lord God, with a thankful heart this morning. Thanking you for life, for health, and for strength. And on this Woman's Day, Lord God, and also thinking of breast cancer and other sickness and diseases, we're grateful, Lord God, that we're still in the land of the living. Lord Jesus, you said, by your stripes, we are healed. And right now, Lord God, I believe just what you said. Many have gone before us who suffered not only from breast cancer, Lord God, but other cancers. Yes. The Lord, you've left a lot of survivors. And I thank you, Lord God, for giving us another opportunity to seek your face and to serve you with our whole hearts. And Lord, I just want to say thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us another opportunity to serve you. Lord Jesus, I give you thanks today for your many, 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 many blessings that you have given us. Lord, you didn't have to wake us up this morning with food on our table and clothes on our back. You didn't have to do those things, but you did because you love us. And Lord God, I pray that we love you as much as you love us. Lord, I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't even know what the next second holds. But I do know that as long as you are with us, everything is going to be all right. Lord. And I say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord Jesus, we're upon this election year. And we know, Lord God, that your word says it's you who puts leaders in place. And we're thanking you right now, Lord God, that you put the right leaders in place and lead them to God as leaders that can hear your voice and do your will, Lord God. Lead us without a heart for the people. Help us, Lord God, in these terrible times that we live in this dark, dark world. Help us all to be lights in this world, Lord God. Thank you that we are the lights of Jesus in this world. We show kindness and compassion to our fellow man, no matter who they are, Lord Jesus. Strengthen us, God, where we are weak. You said in our weakness, you make us strong. And I want to say thank you, Lord God. Thank you all who are assembled here today and the families that are represented. Thank you, Lord God, for helping us to live lives that are pleasing in your sight. Lord God, even our children, Lord God, you said you would hiss for them and call them in, Lord God, to your sheepfold. And I'm just going to say thank you for that, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I lift up our young people, Lord God, here in this world, and it looks like they're without a shepherd, but help us, Lord God, to go to these young people, Lord God, and show them Jesus. Yes. Help God bring our young people back into the fold. We need them here, Lord Jesus. We need them here. Thank you, Lord God, for the preacher who comes forward. Thank you, Lord God, for blessing her, strengthening her, Lord God. Give us ears to hear what God said the Lord. Not only ears to hear, Lord Jesus, but ears to do what you tell us to do. Help us, God. Help us, Lord God. We need you. We need you in this hour, at this time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
don't have. Now, I'm going to put it on, but please don't look at me. But some people have been asking me, what is souls to the poles? And so I'm just going to take a few minutes to explain. This is my holding hat. I'm going to take a few minutes to explain souls to the poles. Souls to the Pose is an initiative where saints, and we are the souls, the saints, go to church, and then we go to the polls to vote. We leave church and go to the polls. The polls will be over from 1 to 5 today and next Sunday, which is the Souls to the Polls. The second part of the initiative is you can drive yourself, but you can also ride church vans. And the whole purpose of going to church, many churches have their names on the church vans to see how many churches are represented at the poll. And Deacon O'Kelly will be driving the church van to get the souls to the polls today and next week. And we thank him for that. Amen. Uh, the third component of souls to the polls, typically in the African American community, people dress up to go to the polls. Men put on ties and shirts. Women got their hats, their gloves, and their pocketbooks to go to the polls. And, but that is on election day, which is, the, is in the middle of the week. So with souls to the polls, you're in your Sunday best today. So while you're in your Sunday best, you go to the polls to vote. The fourth component of soul to the polls in the African American community, what do we do at the church? We go eat. And so there'll be food trucks up at the polls. If you go vote, you can get free. So that's the four components of Souls to the Polls. And I have one more announcement. Yesterday at Livingstone College, they had a pep rally. And our Reverend Dr. William Barber was the speaker. It was wonderful. The kids were excited. But he's going across North Carolina visited each HBCU to encourage our young constituents in college, and it is a great number, the importance of their vote, and they have a seat at the table too. Uh, the message was wonderful, the cheerleaders cheered, the band played to get our young constituents, college students, to the polls. So thank you. Amen. Amen. Strong women don't have attitudes 
we have standards. Right. Empower women, we empower the world. Happy Women's Day.
all those who come uh, when they can, can come. I mean, I'm proud of your accomplishments that you've made, and we certainly thank God for you and for all of our young people. Let's continue to encourage them because if we don't encourage them, who else will? Amen. So it's important for you and I to make sure that we find somebody, some young person, and encourage them to come to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And then when we get them, when they when they come here, it's important for us to act like we love them and care about them. Amen. 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 Oh, that's what we're about and that's what we're going to do. So let us continue to do what God says the Lord. I didn't come up here to try to say all that, but I feel good this morning. So thank all of you for your prayers and get them a mother's funeral and Sister Reverend Phyllis Jones' funeral on the last couple of weeks. There's really been a lot going on. The Steel family, let's continue to Keep them lifted up in prayer. But we're thankful for everything that God has done. May God bless you. May God keep you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. God bless you.
about 13% of all women. Breast cancer can develop in different parts of the breast. The majority of breast cancer cases develop in the milk ducts. Cancers that form in the breast locules are more likely to be present in both breasts. Inflammatory breast cancer presents as warmth, redness, and swelling of the breast. The risk of breast cancer increases with age, like most cancers. Men can also get breast cancer. An estimated 2,790 men are expected to be diagnosed with breast cancer in 2024. And about 530 will die of the disease. Each month of the year recognizes cancer awareness for survivors for specified cancers. The cancer types increase as the months progress. At this time, Mrs. Davis and I would like to recognize our cancer survivors during this month of October. Would you please raise your hand? Would you please come forth? <laughs>
then I would fuss over her brother, I would say. That's my uncle. And she would say, that's my brother. I said, it doesn't matter <laughs> that's your brother. He married my aunt, so I take preference. Mm -hmm. And we would go back and forth like that. And I would call her Black Idella. <laughs> <laughs> and she would call me Black Curl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm black, and my name is black, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean when she has a funny side? Yeah, she does. Yes, she does. She always greets you with a smile. But anyway, we want to present this Faithful Senior Woman's Award to you today. And thank you for your faithful service to me.
She works, she's a member of the Usher Board, and she is our president of our missionary department. She works for the Idaho County DSS as a social worker. And I'm going to tell you just a little bit. She told me not to, but I am going to let you know just what kind of person she is. She's a woman that loves God. Yes. She don't mind going out and speaking and telling, spreading the good word of God. I know in our missionary meeting, sometimes she tells us, she say, let's do, say, God has been good to us. So let us go out and bless someone else and, and show our love to them. So what we did, we created, we did a, 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 care, a care package. And she said, everybody bring something to put in this package and uh, when you just keep it in your cars. And she said, if you see somebody out on the streets or someone that needs help, hand them a basket. Give them a helping hand, let them know that we still care, that people still care for. And then she said, let's go to the parking lot. Let's do a full up and prayer uh, uh, service. She said, all you have to do is go up to uh, anywhere you see a parking lot. Just go up there. It could be the Goodwill, the uh, hospital, the courthouse, anywhere that you think that people need prayer. Just pull up and whisper a prayer for it. You don't even have to get out of your car. Amen. Just say a prayer. Because you know what? I say everybody needs prayer. I don't care who you are, where you're going, we all need prayer. And she is a woman that loves to give and to help people. She don't mind preaching the word, and so I'm, I'm not going to say anything else, because she told me not to say that, but I did. <laughs> so I'm going to introduce you all to the work, to uh, our speaker of the album, Sister George L. Brown, Sister George L. Brown, the congregation. Let's show some love again, our Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,
I thank you for this opportunity, Father God, that you have me on today, Father God. I pray that you remove any distractions, God, that may keep us from hearing the word, God. I ask that you let me speak clearly, God, that your word will go forth, God, that we can go out and tell everyone about the goodness of Jesus, God. God, I love you. I praise you. I worship you, God. God, you give on the honor, the glory, and the praise in Jesus' name. Women of God weathering the storms of life. The definition of a storm is a violent disturbance of the atmosphere with strong winds and usually rain, thunder, lightning, or snow. Some of us seasoned persons may remember growing up when a storm came, your mother or your grandmother told you to unplug the TV, Amen. unplug the radio, Amen. sit down somewhere, because the Lord is working. Amen. One can say recently, the, the environmental storms wreaked havoc on North Carolina and Florida. And we are a blessed people that those hurricanes did not come our way. They caused so much damage and loss of life. To see it on TV or witness it in person just seems so unreal. I have a brother that's a truck driver, and he said he went to Asheville, and he said the roads just look like, the regular highways just look like dirt roads because how much the, the water had came up and washed the roads away. While the news focuses on natural storms, there are other storms just as devastating that people experience every day, such as sickness, financial hardship, broken relationships, and it's sad to say we have even have storms in our churches. These storms of life threaten our peace, comfort, joy, and often bring about fear, doubt, and the sense of hopelessness. John 16, chapter the 33rd verse reminds us, in the world you have tribulations, but take heart, I have overcome the world. See, Jesus promises that we will have trials and tribulations, you know, sometimes when we get saved, we think all our troubles are going to be gone, but that's not the case. We're going to have trials and tribulations in the world because Jesus has come to overcome the world. We can trust him in our storms. Storm in the verb sense means a sudden attack or capture by means of force. Yes, brothers and sisters, when things happen in our life that seems to catch us off guard, that sudden attack, what are we to do? When the storms of life hit, we may often wonder, why is this happening? In today's scripture, the phrase, cast your burdens, means to fully entrust something to God, rather trying to carry it yourself. God is more capable than any human being, and he would take on the weight of a believer's worries and fears. God is all-powerful, all-knowing, and able to handle all of our cares. Yes. As a humble person, you can cast all your cares on him because you know he cares for you. Right. Right. To cast literally means to throw. We should not hold on to our cares. Instead, we should throw them to our Father who cares for us. He has big shoulders and he can handle all of our burdens. Yes. Cares refers to worries difficulties, and needs of this world, and anxieties. The NLT says to give all your worries and cares to God. And the NIV version says to cast all your anxiety on Him. Everything that worries us or weighs us down is to be given to God who cares deeply for us. These verses do not promise that God will remove the source of our anxiety, although He certainly can. And often he has. He is he illustrated that in Mark the fourth chapter, the thirty-ninth verse, when he told the sea and the storm, peace be still. God is trustworthy to handle our cares in the best way. Romans the eighth chapter, the twentieth verse tells us that God works all things for the good of those who love him and call according to his purpose. We trust that God is able and willing to deal with our cares. Jesus also invited people to cast their cares on him when he said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon 
you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Amen. When we do, the promise is that we will find rest for our souls. The assurance is based on who he is. We can come to him with any of our concerns and prayer. And while the burden may still exist, our souls will find rest as we trust in him to help us carry it and to sustain us through the trial. The songwriter said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. What? Everything. Everything we have to God in prayer. In James, the first chapter, we see that God has a purpose for every trial that we experience. God uses trials to test the realness of our faith. Recently, I spoke at my home church, and the subject was, this is a test. Yes. I remember back in the day, some of you probably remember too, on TV, every once in a while, the emergency broadcast system would have a warning that said, this is a test. This station is conducting a test of the emergency broadcast system. Yeah. This is only a test. Yeah. This signal or warning was used by the president to alert the public in the event of war, threat of war, or grave national crisis. If I took some time today to, poll, to take a poll here, I can say with confidence that everyone in this church has been through some type of test or storm in their lives. Yes. There has been a testing of your faith. Yes. And if there has not been a storm in your life, I would advise you to get prayed up, <laughs> stay prayed up, yeah, yeah. and get ready for that war or that storm that's going to yeah, come your way. Yeah, yeah. James, the first chapter, the second through the fourth verse, tells us to consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, wow. whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And what is perseverance? I'm glad you asked. Right. Perseverance or steadfastness means you are devoted, you're loyal, and you're unwavering to your faith and you trust in God. Right. James, James is telling us if we have the faith to hold on, that we have our God who is ready to rescue us during those trials and tribulations. See, I like what Douglas Miller said in his song, that his soul was anchored in the Lord. Yeah. Though the storms keep raging in my life, my soul, my soul, my soul is anchored in the Lord. Anybody here soul been anchored in the Lord? It means you're not going to give up. So how do we women of God weather the storm? First, we must pray. Philippians, the fourth chapter, the sixth to the seventh verse says, Do not be anxious about anything, yeah. but in everything, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer is one of the most powerful ways to find peace in your life. Yes. When you are struggling to cope with weather the storms of life, you can turn to God for comfort. Yes. Prayer is that intimate time alone with God. Yes. So you can tell God all your problems. Yes. Yes. And you don't have to worry about him telling anybody else. Yes. Yes. There are many reasons to pray in hard times. But the most important reason to do it is that it will help you stay strong in the Lord. 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, the 17th to the 18th verse says, To pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So whenever you find yourself in need, or you are in a confusion or crisis, boldly knock on heaven's door and call upon the Lord in faith. He cares about your every need and concern. Prayer is and always will remain the key that opens the door to God's help and to his blessings. Amen. After you pray, you have to have faith and believe that your prayers will be answered. Yes. One thing that I, this is me, cannot stand is when Christians or believers doubt that God will do, not do what they ask him to do. I have often said when 
people spew negativity out of their mouths. Don't say that. Watch what you say. Y'all mm -hmm. be quiet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stop spewing that negativity out. Stop putting that stuff in the atmosphere. Yeah. If you believe that God can do it, He's going to do it. James, the first chapter, the sixth verse says, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of sea blown and tossed by the wind. So we don't say, mm, I guess God can do it. Then turn around and say, Yes, He can. And then your next breath, you say, Well, I don't know. I don't know. Then you back to say, Oh, yeah, He can do it. And then you back down and say, Well, well, we'll just have to see. See, that's the way that they're talking about in the scripture. You just back and forth, like the way you back and forth. I have a question. How would it look to the outside world, to those who don't believe, if, if, as if we as Christians are faced with trials and tribulations and going through the storm, but we don't show that we have faith? How do you think they will see us if we go on crying all the time, we throw on ourselves pity parties. We get that balloon arch made for us at the corner. Y'all know how we do. We grumble and complain like the children of Israel. And we're not showing any ounce of faith. How do you think they're going to look? James, the third chapter, the tenth verse says, After the same mouth proceed blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. We need to stop grumbling and complaining so much. You can't pray for God's hand of protection and then be full of fear and anxiety. It's one way or the other. You can't grab the fence when it comes to faith. You're either in or you're out. Don't let the difficult storms become bigger than the promises of Jesus. He promises to be with you through any storm that he allows in your life. Mark 11, chapter 24, verse says, Therefore I tell you, Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have yes. received it, and it will be yours. Yes. Yes. If we pray and don't believe, we're just practicing religion. All right. Not allowing God to intervene in our situation. Yes. But when we give our prayers to Him, trusting that He is faithful to His word, to never leave us or forsake us, yes. then we're practicing a relationship with God. Right. Yes. And you can find peace in your soul. Instead of our testimonies being woe is me, that testimony should be God got me. Right. I serve a big God. If he's done it once before, he certainly can do it again. Like the saying goes, if you want to wear it, why are you praying? If you pray, why are you wearing it? Isaiah the 41st chapter, the 10th verse says, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Right. Believing that God is for you can transform your life. Okay. When trials come, yeah. you will not be tempted to doubt God's love, care, and concern for you. Right. Now that we pray, now that we believe, and we're not spewing that negativity anymore, <laughs> the last thing we must do, uh oh. We got to wait. Yes. We wait all the time. I know some of y'all wait on that Amazon and come bring your package. <laughs> hey, I, I, I waited my paycheck to hit the account. Yeah. Hey Amen. We waited. But when it comes to waiting on God, our patience runs thin. We try to do things ourselves, and guess what? We mess it up. And we got a bigger mess than what we started with. Listen, God's delays is not his denial. God's delays is not his denial. We wait on the Lord to act, to deliver, to save, to answer our prayers, to provide for our needs, and to renew our strength. This, this verse, this scripture, it, sometimes it messes me up when I get ready to read. Because I'm going to tell you my testimony at the end. Isaiah the 40th chapter, the 31st verse says, I'm trying to come together. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
first promise a renewal of strength of all those who wait upon the Lord. Wait does not mean that you do nothing. It means you trust, you hope, and you have expectation. We wait on God because He is God and we are not God. He can accomplish what we cannot. We wait on Him because we are helpless without Him. We live in a world where things are instant or microwavable. Yeah. We want it in seconds. Yeah. Y'all don't want it in seconds. Oh. <laughs> Waiting is something that is only possible within time. God, the creator of time, is not limited by time. When we are waiting on him to act, he's already acting. Waiting on God is good for us. Because if God acted immediately every time we cried to him, we would be the ones in control and not him. We would call the shots if we did not possess his wisdom. Having to wait causes us to learn to trust him, to trust his time. Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth through the sixth verse says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. And all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Yes, yes. So I'm at the close right here. I'm closing. I'm going to show you my own testimony. If I can just bear with me. Um, Minister Watkins and her husband were with me through this uh, storm in my life. Never saw it coming. Uh, that's how storms are. We never see it coming. But it was back in March of 2020. Um, I had left work. I had went to the grocery store. I knew exactly what you was going to have that night. We are going to have tacos. Um, I knew exactly everything that I had brought. And my phone kept ringing. And I thought it was my cousin calling about our family reunion was coming up. I saw my older sister in the store and we were talking. I said, oh, I'll call when I get in the car. I got in the car and my phone started ringing again. And um, it was my cousin's husband. And um, my nickname is, is Tiny. He said, Tiny, Tyree has been in an accident. That's my older son. He got hit by a car. So, okay, I'm on, on my way to the hospital. My niece called me. Um, my pastor called me. I said, I know, I know, I know. I'm on my way to the hospital. I prayed the whole way there. I got to the Island Memorial. They took me straight back to a room. Um, my niece came out. She is a nurse there. And she came out and she said, Auntie, you want to see him? I said, yes. Yeah. So she grabbed my hand and took me to the back. And my son was laying there unconscious. He had a, they had a towel on his face where I couldn't see his injuries. And I talked to him. And at that time, I didn't know the person that hit him was there at the hospital. She had been driving drunk when she hit him. Um, and so everybody started coming. He had friends out there. Um, after a while, the, one of the EMS guys came in. He grabbed my hand. He dropped to me. He said, I'm going to pray for you. I said, OK, you know, I'm going to pray for your family. My other niece came in. She prayed. My niece, as the nurse, came in. She said, he's coding. Everybody just kind of lost it, like his dad fell out. Um, and I just walked straight up to her and I said, exactly what does that mean? And she said, they're losing him. And I said, tell him to stop, his body can't take it anymore. So he came back around, but they took him to the Baptist. They had a flight to the helicopter to Baptist. He was there for about um, seven days before he passed away from his injuries that were so severe. Um, I had my niece there, and I'm going to give you some advice. If you ever go through a medical crisis, if you have somebody that's a nurse, have them there with you, with you in the hospital. Because when the doctors come out and they explain stuff to you, it's in those medical terms you may not explain. So I laid heavily on my sister-in-law. I laid heavily on my niece to tell me, you know, what's, what's going on. What, you know, my sister-in-law was toe-to-toe -to -toe with the doctor. What do you mean you can't do this? And, and stuff like that. But he did pass away. But... Um, and that was the time during COVID, and um, COVID had just hit. They locked down the hospital, so nobody could really come in Baptist. And y'all know how we are as black African American people. At funerals, we love on each other. Oh. That did not happen then because of COVID. Yeah. The funeral told me 100 people, then it went down to 50 people. And at the time, I didn't realize what was happening. I was going to the funeral home. My cousin called me, and she said, Cousin, I just want you to know that there's a purpose behind this. Because I screamed out to God, I don't know your purpose for this, Lord, but I know, I know you got a reason for this happening in my life. And 
At that time, I, I didn't know the purpose. And so after that, I just had people, like my cousin that got up and smoked, she had one child. And he, after that, he passed away from cancer. So we was always talking to each other and calling each other, and I'm trying to encourage her. You know, and then I had other friends, their sons died. Because you, as a mother or a parent, you never expect your child to pass away before you. You never expect that. And so um, after the funeral and all that, my storm was not over because I had a trial to go to. Yeah. She was already out on bond. She was out on bond for DWI when she hit Tyrion. She had a long criminal record. So she stayed in a, she stayed in jail for a year. The victim advocate, the DA, they were all great. I saw that DA go toe to toe with that judge when they were trying to let her out. She's not ready to be out, Your Honor. She's gonna get out and do it again. A year passed, y'all. I was at work and the victim advocate called me and said, Guess what? Somebody bailed Jennifer out of jail. I lost it in my office. I'm like, what? How did they do that? So I called um, his dad, which he probably shouldn't have done because he just put one day activity in my life, in my mind. She's going to run. She's going to go to New York. She's going to do all this. She's going to do all that. But she went and signed a plea deal, and her plea deal was second degree murder. I didn't know they could plead somebody for driving uh, DWI, but her criminal record was so, uh, so wrong. Um, she came, she signed a plea deal. The day came for her to turn herself in. Y'all guess what? She didn't come to court. So here we are again, uh, trying to figure out what to go on. She said she had COVID. The judge was like, go get her. Go get her. Go see where she's at. If she's got COVID, she's at home. She wasn't there. So I keep getting these phone calls. And I'm calling the police station. I'm calling the sheriff's department. She's here. She's there. They could never catch her. So finally, I had to go to the state. So police department. And uh, my niece, other niece, were there, and she saw the chief of police. She said, My aunt's out there. And if it's not important, she wouldn't be here. And so I sit down, I said, uh, Sir, I'm here because of my son. I explained everything to him. And his words out of his mouth was, Ma'am, we got to have a warrant. Y'all know I'm afraid, right? I said, Sir, the warrant was this day. This is the judge. You got a ping on the phone. Blah, blah, blah. So probably after seven more days, they finally, uh, she finally came to court. When, I, when they told me she was out, and I was so upset, I had a minister friend at work, and she told me, she said, you know what? I know you're upset, but God gives everybody grace. Mm -hmm. God gives everybody grace. And I had, that was a hard pill for me to swallow, but he does. He gives everybody grace regardless of the circumstance. So my niece continued that. We were there for the hearings, and one thing that I asked of her, I said, make sure you get saved. You, you need to get saved. God, I pray that God saved your soul. When she was out on bond, she hit somebody else. <laughs> she had a boyfriend. They got in an argument. They got in an argument. Um, it, I heard that she, they were fighting or something, and she was trying to get away, and she got him. But he wouldn't testify. He would go against her. you know. But she did get 12 to 13 years um, in prison. But... This women of God, weather the storms, just know that God cares for you. You know, um, that situation, sure, I would like to have my son here, but that was in God's plan. And I've grown stronger from that situation. I've grown stronger from that situation. And I hope that I'm a testimony to somebody that if he did it for me, whatever situation you have, like the ladies that had cancer, breast cancer, or whatever sickness or illness you had, Whatever you have, God cares for you. Amen.
inspiring message. As you stand to your feet, if you know that if you die today, that hell will be home. We want to take this time to offer Christ to you today. Man, woman, boy, or girl. Is there one today? Or perhaps you're here and you've already made a decision for Christ and you're without a church home. The doors of this church are now open. You can come by letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. But I say to you, as I have said every week, you don't put off to tomorrow what the Lord is telling you. You need to do right now. Is there one? You bid you come. If you desire prayer, there's plenty of room around the altar. Come that we can pray together. Is there one? I'm going to ask Dr. Lillian Brown to come and lead us now. I pray.
our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Church, say amen.